live from Wrestling911.com headquarters, I'm Dr. Snowman Jones. This is the report card you've been waiting for. We're going to list off the WWE superstars, starting with Dwayne The Rock Johnson, moving down the alphabet, giving them their grades for this year. We're going to talk about where we rate them as athletes and professional wrestlers, and where we rate them in regards to how the WWE is using them. If you don't like the way that Snowman Jones sees it, go ahead and leave a comment. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. This is Wrestling 911 Audio. First up, we got Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and there is not much that I can say bad about The Rock. The Rock is in peak physical condition now. He's looking great. The tattoos are cool. Shaved his head. Little male pattern baldness there. Um, you know, I gotta give an A to The Rock in terms of physical conditioning. Give him an A in terms of his overall ability in the ring, his entertainment value. A plus. Also, the way the WWE is using him. They know this guy's gonna make movies. They know they're not gonna be able to use him all the time. So bringing him in for big events, for pay-per-view buys, and the occasional 1,000 episode of Raw and things of the sort is a great use of Dwayne The Rock. I think they're doing great. Next up is Epico. Epico, I don't know. I just don't see this guy being a long-term employee in the WWE. I don't think they're using him for much. Uh, I gotta give him a C overall when it comes to superstar quality. He's just not nearly on par with guys like John Cena and The Rock. He, uh, he's an interesting athlete, very athletic, decent guy. Um, I don't know him real well personally, so I'm gonna give him a C overall. Then you've got Evan Airborne. Athletic ability, skill, talent, give him an A+. This guy's amazing. Nobody does quite what this guy does. I uh, met him and his girlfriend in Ybor City. I think Florida Underground Wrestling was doing an event in conjunction with some other shows. And he was a nice guy. Girlfriend was nice. We joked around with her a little bit, joked around with him a little bit. I like the guy. WWE is, is jobbing him a little bit. I don't like that. I wish they would have a legitimate cruiserweight division under 200 pounds and really let this guy shine. Because, you know, if they pushed this guy, if they gave him the ability to really shine against other guys his weight, maybe an AJ Styles, maybe a Amazing Red, people of the sort, he, he could be an all-star. He could be the Hulk Hogan of that division. They could have him holding a title and really, really make him out to be a big deal. They just don't. I give the WWE a C, maybe even a D, in how they're using Evan Bourne. And then there's Miss Eve. In terms of look, talent, she's a B, B+. Plus. She's gorgeous. I mean, it's hard not to give her an A, but there's nothing that unique about her in terms of when you put her in a lineup of all the other beautiful women in the WWE, I don't know. Like Sometimes I have a hard time telling them apart because there's so many beautiful women be one thing if they had one beautiful brunette, but they've just got so many, it's, it's hard to identify her from a lineup. Then there's Ezekiel Jackson. Ezekiel, huge guy. Just a monster. One of the biggest guys in the WWE. In terms of the red shorts, the red, uh, red and black that he wears the ring, reminds me physically and in terms of same gear as Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed didn't have a long tenure in the WWE, I don't know that Ezekiel will either. I've uh, talked with Ezekiel once or twice over Facebook. Seemed like a nice guy. They definitely could push this guy as a monster. He has the physical size and appearance just like of a tiny, tiny lister, Zeus. They could push him in the main event if they wanted to. The WWE has never been great about pushing black superstars into main events. I don't think they're going to give him the time of day. Next up, the great Kali. The guy looks like the part. You got to give him an A on just overall looks and appearance. 7'1", 7'2", 400 pounds. Just got huge shoulders and arms. You know, uh, I feel bad for the guy because when he walks to the ring, though, he looks like he's in pain. He looks like he's got acromegaly where, you know, his bones are growing. He can hardly move. His joints hurt. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say... There's evidence that he's been on steroids for a long period of time in regards to his, his physical appearance, which when you're that big isn't good. Uh, he had elevated enzyme levels in his liver, which would, which would indicate that he was doing some sort of 
enhancement drug. They took him out of the main event or out of the main roster for a while. He came back, his his enzyme levels were fine. They never said that he was doing steroids per se, but he was probably doing some sort of enhancement uh we'll say drug or or herb something like that i don't want to accuse him of doing something he's not but the bad thing is i just don't think that kali physically is going to be able to compete four or five years from now but in terms of look he's got it and the international draw this guy is the hulk hogan of india and you have to remember there are a billion people in india plus so if this guy sells you know a, an action figure to five percent of the kids in india this guy's making the wwe millions and millions they're smart to keep him on the roster use him sparingly i give him a a b b plus for how they're using him when he won the wwe championship you know core wrestling fans were pissed you got guys who like to see real wrestling hated it the fans in india bought up dolls bought up dvds bought up everything they could with the great Kali and it was right before they did a tour of India and they filled the house and treated this guy like a king. WWE's using him well for what they're trying to do and that's make money. There's Heath Slater. Heath Slater, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is a Tampa native and if he's not a Tampa native, I've seen him a lot around Tampa. Uh, the one man rock band or whatever they call him, looks a lot like Edge, nice guy. I've never been a fan of his work in the ring He's talented, athletic, decent on the mic, just not my kind of person. Very much like a Chris Jericho in my mind that other people see it, I just don't happen to enjoy it that much. I'm going to give him a B all around. WWE is not using him. Actually, you know what? The WWE is use, using him pretty well. They, particularly that whole gimmick where they had superstars coming out, legends coming out from the past. You're getting a big pop for the legends. You know, the legend would get over at Heath's expense. And at least it's getting him on TV, it's giving him a push, and frankly, it's better than just having him as a jobber. They're doing something fun, creative with it. So I'll give him a B plus on the gimmick, because I love to see the Roddy Pipers and Big Van Vaders, the Sid Viciouses, all those guys coming back is pretty cool. Heath Slater is being a real pro about letting those guys go over when some of them can hardly walk. Heath's a good guy. I like him as a person. In the ring, I'm not as big of a fan. Hornswoggle, man, the WWE just loves using little people. I'm not a fan of using little people in the ring. I, I see it more of as a circus attraction. I don't know. I think it takes too much away from the credibility of wrestling. Seems like a good guy. I've never met him. Don't know much about him personally. He's no shooter storm. He's, he's in terms of they've used him, I think they've used him as much as they can. Overall, I give him... A C. I just don't see that he needs to be on the WWE lineup right now. Let's see who's next alphabetically. Well, we have Jack Swagger. Jack's an interesting person. I met Jack in Tampa, and it was when he was training with FCW. And a lot of people really gave this guy kind of uh, the they they gave the impression that what you see in the ring being this bit of a jackass, athletic, strong, six five guy is what he is in real life. Bit of a jackass, full of himself, but let's face it, the guy can just go. You know, he's athletic, he's talented, he's been jobbing lately. I think if they wanted to push him, make him a real superstar, put him in the intercontinental title picture, he has all the abilities. In the same regards, um, I, I don't know how much, how much longer he's gonna last if he plays ball. He's one of those guys that athletically he could be there for 10 years and, and the WWE would find stuff for him. There was one time, I'm not real proud of it, um, He's coming by, and he tried. I was uh, outside FCW Arena, hanging out with my friends, talking. He came by, kind of walked through the group. I, uh, um, I was a bit of an asshole because he clearly. Someone asked him kind of if they wanted an autograph or if they could get an autograph or whatever, and he kind of brushed it off. You know, he was um, not real cool about it. So I asked him if he wanted my autograph, and it really threw him through a loop, like. Uh, it's hard to explain. I actually have it on video, but he was really thrown through a loop like, why would I want your autograph, Snowman Jones? But anyway, um, he has a lot of talent, athletic big guy. With that, I'm going to leave off. We've, we've done it all the way to Jack Swagger. We're starting off next week with Jerry the King Lawler. <laughs>